It's entitled, The Rich Young Man. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. And that's the scripture for today. Now we'll start with prayer if you will join me. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the rain that you have given us. Lord, we thank you for those that are here, for those that could not make it today. Father, I pray that you'll be with them. Father, as we open our hearts up for the prayer requests, I pray that you do remember all of those because you hear every word that we have to say to you, dear Lord. And you care so much for us. We thank you for that love. Bless this service today, Father. Just have your spirit upon us. Help us to hear the words that you would have us to hear and imply to our lives. Father, that we may bring you glory and honor. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week, I spoke to you, and at the end of the service, I gave you two invitations that Jesus gave. One was from John 3.16, and one was from Luke 9.23. Can you guys quote me Luke 9.23 now? Try. Come on, I'll help. Jesus said to whoever wanted to be his disciple, what? Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. See, you're learning scripture. That's great. Because last time, everybody's like, Luke 9, 23? What is that? So I want to challenge you. What's Mark 8, 23 then? Anybody know? It's a trick question. It's the same thing. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. The difference is Luke says take up your cross daily. And I think that's very important. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But in John 3.16, God gave us an invitation to believe in Jesus Christ, His Son. The Messiah had come, and most people knew there was something about this man. They didn't know if he was a prophet or what he was. But they, he had a tremendous amount of people following him because he did mighty, wonderful things. Some of them came to hear him. Some came to have miracles performed. But they wanted to see who this Jesus really was. And if you remember from Scripture just before Luke 9.23... Jesus asked his disciples, specifically Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter had that aha moment where he realized and said, you are the Son of God, you are Christ, the Messiah that we've been longing for. And upon that profession of faith, Jesus said, I will build my church upon that. Well, he goes on further then to, do, to say that if you want to be my disciple, you need to take these three steps. Deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. John 3.16 is an invitation that many of us say that we have taken, that we believe in Jesus Christ. If you ask most people in this country, they say that they're Christian. The consent in the country is kind of going away from God. We're slowly drifting apart. But still, if you ask most people, this is a Christian nation. We believe in Jesus Christ. But when you start really getting in and questioning them, what do they believe? They hear that verse and they say, I believe in Jesus Christ, but do they follow him? A disciple is one that is like Christ, that follows Christ, because Christ is their master, their Lord. Many of you have probably experienced love in your life, right? At least some point. Some of you had a little special sweetheart, maybe even something you call a true love. Anybody ever experienced that? (laughs) Well, if you have, then that person that you decided to love, they made you feel special, didn't they? They did all these wonderful things and you fell in love with them because they were nice, they made you feel good when you were around them. When you were near them, you just got knots in your stomach and you couldn't speak. And when you went to bed at night, you couldn't sleep without thinking about them. So you were in love, right? Because that person did things that made you feel special. Well, God loved you so much that he sent Jesus Christ to die for your sins. Jesus was obedient unto death. A horrific death. 
And when he died on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. Who has greater love than that? So in response, we should love that person that shows the love for us, right? We do in our human nature. So do we with God. That's John 3.16. You realize that what God did for you, and you realize everything that Jesus did for you, and you say, I I accept that. I accept that Jesus Christ is who he said he is, that he came to die for my sins, and I want to be a Christian. Father, forgive me and come into my life. But then the next step is Luke 9.23. Do you want to be his disciple? If you do, you need to take up, deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow him. So that's three steps, right? So this message is titled, Give Me Three Steps. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Have you ever heard of Leonard Skinner, Barry? Do you, have you heard of Leonard Skinner? Yeah. Okay. He's, they say, someone waves their hand, so I'm like, I'm not going to raise my hand to knowing Leonard Skinner. <laughs> but anyway, they're a southern rock group that was famous for um, Sweet Home Alabama, Give Me Three Steps, Give Me Back My Bullets, um, Free Bird, songs of that nature. And I'll read you some lyrics from their, their song um, that's Give Me Three Steps. And they are, go like this. It says, I was cutting a rug down at a place called The Jug with a girl named Linda Lou. When in walked a man with a gun in his hand and he was looking for you-know-who. He said, hey there, fella, with a hair colored yellow. What you trying to prove? Because that's my woman there and I'm a man who cares and this might be all for you. I was scared and fearing for my life. I was shaking like a leaf on a tree because he was lean and mean, big and bad, pointing that gun at me. I said, wait a minute, mister, I didn't even kiss her. I don't want no trouble from you. And I know you don't owe me, but I wish you would let me ask one favor from you. Won't you give me three steps, give me three steps, mister, give me three steps towards the door. We do that so many times with God. We say, wait a minute, Lord, I know that I haven't been serving you the way that I should. Won't you give me another chance? But what are you going to say at Judgment Day? when Jesus Christ asks you about everything you've done in your, in your life. In fact, the Bible says you'll be accountable for every, every idle word even. Looking back at your earthly love, John 3.16, we accepted that love and we said, I accept who Jesus is. If we apply that to our earthly love and we decide we're going to get married, how do you think this relationship would go if this was what happened? I accept this relationship... However, I choose not to fully commit myself to this relationship. I will only love you in the good times. I will only be faithful to you if someone else doesn't catch my eye. I will look out for you as long as you are looking out for me. I realize how much you love me and what you've done for me, but I'm going to look out for number one first, and that's me. Don't we do that so many times in our Christian walk? I guarantee you, if you'd have said that, Merle, you'd have got slapped probably. Okay? Would not have been a happy, joyous day. So I even wrote some vows. I was thinking of Merle when, when this happened. I said, what would have happened if he'd have done this? And this was his vows. To have and maybe to hold from this day forward. Um, well, at least we'll see. For better or for worse. Wait a minute, I don't know about worse. Richer? Oh yeah. Poor? No. In sickness? Well, as long as you answer my prayers. And in health? Of course in health. To love and to cherish from this day forward as long as you don't require anything out of me. I don't think those vows would go along too well, would they? But so many people believe in John 3.16, but do not want to apply Luke 9.23 to their lives. And I'm not pointing the fingers, because I'll point them back at myself, and I have walked that walk plenty of times in my Christian life. I've said, God, I will obey you when I get this accomplished in my life when a kid has gone to college, when I've got this accomplished in work, when I just have more time, whatever the reasons might be. I've said, Lord, I will give you all of me when I get ready for it. It's got to be on my time frame, not yours. There's a lot more to a love affair than someone loving you. You have to love back. Jesus doesn't want to be only your Savior. He wants to be your Lord. In fact, He demands to be your Lord. Luke 9.23 said, the same way John 3.16 did, that whoever wants to take this invitation, whoever wants to be my disciple, must deny themselves daily, take up their cross, and follow me. 
three steps. So you have them right there. When you're facing death, if you follow these three steps, you won't have anything to worry about. You won't have to worry about that man standing in the door because you know that not only are your sins covered from John 3.16, but you have been living a life as Jesus' disciple. When you stand there accountable for every action that you've done, you will have lived a life as a disciple of Christ. But do you want to be that disciple? It's a choice that you have to make. In the song, there's a guy that's faced with an encounter with death. And that's what he's looking at. He's looking at judgment. Because here comes a man in with a 44. That's a pretty big gun. And he's staring right at him, saying, What are you doing, fella, with the hair colored yellow? And the guy trembles and like, well, What can I say to this? I'm guilty. And I'm going to die. So I've got to think of something. So he asked for three steps. But his reason is to get three steps close to the door so he can escape. Let me tell you this. None of us will escape God's judgment. He is a righteous, holy God, and He will judge us for what we do. The difference is is whether we're covered, whether our sins are pardoned. There's no way that we can escape judgment. There's no way that we can get to heaven on our own. So He reached out to us through Jesus Christ and sent His Son to live a blameless life and then take our sin and shame upon Him once and for all. There's nothing that you have ever done, nothing that you will ever do that can separate you if you accept Jesus Christ. He did it once and for all. Satan, though, wants to deceive you. That's what he does. He's done it for many years, and he does it well. If you, live, if you are living a worldly life, Satan is deceiving you. Now, that doesn't mean you need to be into sex, drugs, rock and roll. That can simply mean you're not obeying what God is calling in you, your heart to do. I don't know what it is. I did it a year ago. A year ago, Dan Bonnie said, well, would you like to pastor the church? I said, no way. I don't want to do that. And God kept working on me and said, why would you not? Why would you be disobedient? I put you in this position. Why would you disobey me? And I'm like, God, I'm not disobeying you. I'm serving you. And he said, not with all your heart. You're serving me with what you want to give me again. And I'm like, Lord, I'm not ready. He said, I know. In your weakness, you'll find my strength. And so finally he broke me down. I said, whatever you want, God, I will do. And I consider this to be my first job, not my part-time job, nothing else. I will do whatever the Lord calls me to do as long as He gives me the strength to do it. Because in Christ, I can find my strength and do all things. But when I rely on my own might, I'm in for trouble, aren't I? And I don't think this guy at three steps is going to beat a 44 bullet, do you? I really don't think three steps is going to solve his problem. But he thought it would. So it's your choice. Do you take the three steps... Or do you continue to try to play on your own terms? Because if you try to play on your own terms, you're deceiving yourself. You are placing yourself as a God above the true God. If you proclaim to be His child, if you profess to be a Christian, and you're not living out these three steps, then you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. And the Bible's clear about what the results are. Luke 16, 13 says this, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And the point's not about money. It's about the world. It's about the devil. Whatever it is, you might say, I don't have a problem with money. Well, I guarantee you, you have a problem with something we all do. And it's a matter of whether you give that once and all to Jesus to take care of. And I think that's why Luke put daily in there. Because we've got to be reminded that we've got to do it daily. Once we think that we don't have to do it daily, that's when Satan is just right behind the corner again to come in and pounce on us because we think that we're more than we are. So what's going to happen when you face death? Are you ready for that judgment? I know that I'm not ready by any means because I've got a life I still want to live here on earth. But the difference in where it was one year ago was I don't want to half-heartedly serve God. I want to serve Him with all of my heart. Whatever He calls me to do, I want to be obedient to do. Whenever Judgment Day does come, then I'm ready. But I don't want it to be now. But I'm not going to try to let Satan deceive me. I'm going to spend my time practicing these three things. John three sixteen through 18 says this. I want to say this so that we see a little bit more than just one verse. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only, one and only Son, 
that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Verse 18, Whoever again believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. If you believe in that, you're not condemned. Jesus didn't come to condemn you, but there will be a day. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 and 10 says this, So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. You will be held accountable. You can't do it on your own. But if you deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow Him, guess what? You can. Matthew 12, 35 and 37 says this, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. So if you're saved, you don't have to worry. You don't have to face condemnation. But you still have to face judgment. There's a difference in the two. You still will be held accountable for the things you do. John 3.16 might be your fire insurance, whatever it is. But if your heart is not right and you're not following God, then you're not loving Him like the example that I gave you in the marital relationship. It doesn't mean much. You might still get the preacher to profess and say, I do, but Polly's not going to believe you, is she, Merle? Because your actions aren't going to show it. If you love Jesus Christ, your actions will show it. James tells you you can't have faith without works. It's impossible. Because if you love God, you will want to please God. If you remember the passage in Luke, um, Jesus asked Peter who he is, and then right after who, who he thinks that he is, and Peter professes. And then right after that, Jesus goes on to say that he would die, and he had to die for, his, for our sins. Then he gave the three steps. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. Any, he went on to say that anyone who thinks more of their own life will lose it. And he even goes on further to say that if you're ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of you before the Father. And he's the only way to get to the Father. So what is that saying about what you need to do with your life? If we read that, Luke 9, 23 through 26, it reads this way. Then he said to them, All, whoever wants to be my disciples must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. Now verse 24, what I was talking about. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words... The Son of Man will be ashamed of them when He comes in His glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. I went to Texas last week. Some of you know that, some of you don't. And I used my phone while I was with me. I told you, it's a smartphone. It's much smarter than I am. On the plane ride down there, I used it to read Scripture because I use it as my Bible all the time. And you can highlight and add notes in. It's really cool. And so I wrote First and Second Corinthians When I wasn't on a longer flight, when I was on a longer flight, I was sleeping. I was out because I worked all day Monday and then I flew Monday night. Well, coming back, I used it in my vehicle and I used it in the vehicle a lot to play Christian music, but I didn't have an auxiliary cord with me. Plus, I couldn't figure out how to work the stereo. I bought a truck is what I did when I was down there and I had no idea how to use it. So I said, well, I'll look for a Christian bookstore. I'm sure I can probably figure out the CD player, right? I hoped I could anyway. So I looked for a Christian bookstore all the way across Texas. And if you know Texas, that's a long way. And I yet to find a Christian bookstore anywhere. And then I said, you know what? I have a smartphone with me. Let's see what I can do. So I just Googled in there. I put Christian bookstore. And it came up with, do you want to search by your location? I'm like, hey, that sounds really neat. Sure. So I hit my location in there. And here comes up this map. Shows me exactly where I'm at. Shows me the direction I'm heading. And it says there's a Christian bookstore called whatever it was here in Pueblo, Colorado. 
And it tells me how far to get there. It calculates in traffic the speed I'm going. I even check. I've sped up and the time changed. Some I slowed down the time changed. I was like, this is cool. So it told me exactly where I could go find that Christian bookstore. And then as I got close to the intersection, this little voice comes across and says, you need to turn in a half a mile. Take the left-hand lane instead of the right-hand lane to turn at the light. And I'm like, where's my wife? And I'm like, that's not my wife because that voice was pleasant. She'd be sitting, slow down, we're going to get up to the exit. Sorry about that. So I turned and everything, and it kept telling me what to do. I said, hmm, I'm going to try something out. So I turned deliberately wrong. And you know what it did? It adjusted the directions and told me where to go. And I didn't hear one time, you idiot, or anything like that. It was just as pleasant. So I tried it again. I thought, I'll irritate it enough, and it'll come out right. It's a woman's voice. It's going to come out that, hey, buddy, what are you doing? It never did. Now, let me say this. I don't think I've said it today, sweet. but I love you. <laughs> it told me how to get there. And I drove right into the parking lot, parked the car, and said, your destination is here. And I got some Christian books on CD and some Christian music and listened to them on the way back. But that was so crazy that that phone could tell me everything. Scary, too, that they knew exactly where I was, the speed I was going, everything else. But that phone gave me the directions that I needed to get to the destination that I wanted to go to. Here's your roadmap, guys, period. But you can't pick and choose what part. And there is only one path. There's not a bunch of paths. Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And it's all spelled out for you in here. But you can't pick and choose what parts that you want to follow. You have to follow it all. The Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I'll stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. John 14, 5 and 6 says this. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where we're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's only one way, and it's spelled out for you here. But if you do get off the path, guess what? God is willing to get you back on if you'll just stop, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Mark 8, 34 through 38 is the account in Mark. And it's called the way of the cross, and it reads this way. Then we called, and how should I say it, sweetheart? I got this look. The Bible says, how? Just read it. She says, I always get up here and say, and notice I didn't do that. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And she says, that's the one thing I want to critique you on. But then there's a second thing that she critiques me on right after the one thing, right? She says, don't say it says in the Bible. Just read it. So Mark eight thirty four through 38. In verse 34... Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation... The Son of Man will be ashamed of them when He comes in the Father's glory with His holy angels. So you've got it twice that you've heard it. What is your soul worth, though? Is it worth taking three steps or not? We have two passages that tell us the same thing. Maybe you want to rely just on John 3.16. Maybe you want to have a marriage that's one-sided, a relationship that is. Or maybe you want to live your life showing how much you care about God and what He did for you and what Jesus did on the cross. So what does it mean to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus? Well, we've been talking about denying ourselves. It's to get the eye out of the picture. That our needs, our desires are not as important as what God's plans are for our life. It doesn't mean that you won't do things. It doesn't mean you won't get to go fishing again or anything like that. It means that you'll live your life for Him. That it's more important to serve Him than it is to get the treasures of this earth. To take up your cross daily. Well, the cross, if you remember in those times, was not just a little symbol. It was a sign of torture. The Romans used the cross 
to execute people in the most horrific way. It was humiliating. It was painful. It was death. No one survived it. And the Scripture here is telling you to take up daily, to die to yourself daily. You've got to be willing to deny yourself, but then you've got to die to yourself daily and take God's needs, His desires, His plans. And you won't be let down by any means because God made you. He knows what makes you tick. He knows the thing that your heart truly longs for. Look at any movie star or athlete. The more they get, the more they want. The more they're not satisfied. The more that you see drugs and other things come in their life because they just never can get what it takes to make them happy. And they never will because you'll only find true happiness in God. And then follow Jesus. It means a true commitment that you will be His disciples. Not just what would Jesus do, but what did Jesus do. Your life has to pattern after that. It's total surrender and sacrificial death to sin that you may live through Christ. Jesus came to give you life and to give you life abundantly so that you could live for Him rather than yourself. The passage that we read this morning in Mark 10 talked about the example of the young, rich, educated young man that knew Scripture. He knew that the Messiah was coming and he was looking for that Messiah because he wanted to inherit eternal life. So when he found Jesus, he came running up to him. We'll read it again. It says, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him, fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? This man recognized who Jesus was. And he ran up to him because the issue that he was going to ask him was very, very important to him. He didn't want to hesitate. He ran up to Jesus. He knew... He wasn't maybe sure that Jesus was the Savior of the world, but he knew that Jesus was someone that could give him this answer at least. And the question that he asked was, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 18, Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Jesus answered him by telling him who he was. He said, why do you call me good? Because no one's good but God. That told the man who Jesus really was. He was God. He was the way. He was the promised Messiah that, that he had been looking for. I don't know if the young man caught this or not, but that's what Jesus was saying. And then he said, here's what the law said. Here's the things that you need to do. And notice he even threw in honor your father and mother. That's a tough one for sure, right? And I don't know if the young man... Realized it, but he answered with saying, Teacher, verse 20, he declared, All of these I have kept since I was a boy. So the young man thought he was doing everything right. He liked what Jesus was telling him so far. He said, I've been looking for the Messiah. Here he is. I've been doing these things. All right, I'm on the path. <laughs> then Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus knew the man's heart. He was compassionate because he knew even though the man said, and probably even believed that he truly wanted to do whatever it would take to inherit eternal life, Jesus knew his heart, and the man's heart wasn't committed. There's a difference. So Jesus said to him, One thing you lack, he said, Go sell everything that you have and give to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Three steps. Deny yourself. Go sell what you have. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. Take up your cross daily. You've got to give it all to me. Daily. You can't worry about the things of this world. You've got to worry about what I want for you and I will provide for you. And then three, come follow me. The man was given three steps. But in verse 22, at this, the man's face fell because he wasn't willing to take those three steps. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Whatever it is, whether it's wealth, whether it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll, whether it's gossip, whether it's the fact that you can't honor your mother and father, they're all sins, and sin separates us from God. And some of those sins may have you held captive even though that you're saved. But guess what? All you've got to do is deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow Him. He is a faithful and loving God that will forgive you. And then you can get treasures, not on this earth, but build up treasures in heaven where moths... Don't destroy and thieves don't come in and steal. 
The man similar to the man in the song. The man in the song got caught. He faced judgment. He wasn't looking for an answer. He wasn't saying, show me the way to inherit eternal life. But he was faced with the same thing. Here's judgment day. What am I going to do? And he asked the man for three steps. Well, the guy got distracted, if you know the rest of the song, and he ran out of the door running for his life. But you can't run from God. There will be a judgment day. And he will determine whether you are a follower of Jesus Christ or a fan of Jesus Christ or you don't know Jesus Christ. And you will be held accountable for your actions. If you notice in your bulletin, there's a poem in the center. It says this. Tell me, what will you do with Jesus? Your answer is the key. Someday your heart, your heart will be asking, what will he do with me? And that's a question that I present to you today. John 3.16 tells you how to get saved. Luke 9.23 gives you three simple steps to follow Jesus. Are they going to be easy? No. Read through Scripture. Following Jesus is not easy. It led to Him being crucified on a cross. It led to the disciples that spread the message to the world in Acts to be crucified or hung or boiled in a pot or whatever it was. The trip's not easy, but is the trip worth it? What is your soul worth? Jesus is asking whoever wants to be saved to, to accept Him as their Savior. And He's ask, also asking whoever wants to be His disciple to take those three steps. And I ask you, what will you will accept today? In just a minute, we're going to come take communion. But first, I'm going to pray. And remember that in communion, you're supposed to give these things to God. You're supposed to lay down your burdens, cast your cares upon Him, lay your sins down, so that you can come and take communion with Him as His holy servant. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 32 gives this. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night He was betrayed took bread, then He gave thanks. And He broke the bread. Now I've already broke some for us, but I'm going to symbolically break the bread. And said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that He will not finally condemn... we will not be finally condemned with the world. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that you sent Jesus Christ to die for us. Thank you for loving us. Father, when the world was so wicked, you found one righteous man and you chose not to destroy us. We thank you for that love and commitment. And you continue to love us that you sent Jesus to die for our sins that he would go through terrible things, that he would have to give up his Godhead, that he would face all the things that we face in life, but he would stay sinless and blameless to bring you honor and glory and to be the sacrifice that we needed to restore us into a right relationship with God. Father, we thank you so much for that, for continuing to love us unconditionally. Help us to love our brothers and sisters unconditionally as Christ did. Help us not just to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, but also as our Lord. Lord, we need your strength to deny ourselves. We need your strength to take up our cross daily. And we need your strength to follow Him. And you loved us so much that when Jesus returned to heaven to prepare a place for us, that He sent the Spirit to give us the power 
that we couldn't be united as a body of Christian believers on our own. But through your spirit, Father, we can. We can have a spirit of unity. We can have a spirit of peace. We can be empowered. We can be comforted. So many things that you gave your spirit to be with us every second of the day. Wow, how much that you loved us. And Father, we lay down those things that are keeping us from serving you correctly, those idols. Whatever they may be, we lay them at the foot of Jesus. Take them away. Jesus died to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and we thank you for that. We thank you for each and every one that's here. And we pray your blessings upon this church. We pray that we are your obedient body of believers. And we pray that we make a difference so that when we do join you in heaven, that you'll say, well done, my good and faithful servants. And we ask these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.